Hello everyone, I'm Jerry Stone, and this is the Recapathon, episode 2. The Recapathon, where three radios and a tube-driven record player are recapped, because they sound awful. Anyway, the four contestants are... It's not a competition. Capehart, TC20, Stuart Warner, A61P3, Firestone Record Player, has a million model numbers, and Philco, 37, 630. Watch now in like three to four weeks or months when the Recapathon will come on. <laughs> Today's radio is actually a radio. K Part TC20. This radio, which is from the late 50s, uses an all American 5 design and also has a radioactive telecron clock. The dial hands were coated with radium. They scary. Don't eat them. Let's take this bad boy apart and get them all recapped. To take this apart, you will start by using a large Phillips screwdriver. Let's... Ding! <laughs> okay, here we go. And to prevent damage, we're just going to move the tuning capacitor all the way in. Now, here we are. And here we have our radio chassis and our telecron clock. The telecron clock is also held in with dun dun four Phillips screws. Radioactive. Okay, there's the telecron clock. It's out now. So and that, here we see our model identification sticker. Okay, now we're gonna take off the knobs. We will also put these in the screw dish. Now we will take out the two screws holding the chassis. And yes, there's a loop and ten on the back. Okay, now we will flip this back and pull both up. <laughs> Thought someone was actually at the door. Ding dong goes the doorbell. Okay, now we can pull the chassis and the telecron clock out. Should probably pull the chassis. Yeah, I have to slide the chassis over to the area to do that. And we can pull it out along. And we'll kind of pull it halfway out and then pull the telecron clock out. And there's your case. There's your clock. Now, we are going to actually desolder the clock because I used electrical tape, and electrical tape is scary. So, we're going to desolder that, and yeah. Even though these are... Okay, so here's our telecron clock face. These three green dials are radioactive. Okay, now, we're going to desolder the antenna. So there's our loop antenna. Let's go over here. Okay, now finally we have our radio chassis. Here's the bottom. We got a bunch of filter capistons, and then we have a few black, two black beauties, and a stupid filter capacitor. I'm actually going to start by replacing the wax. But. For this, uh, a word of caution. Be careful when flipping these overs. There's tons of da there's dangerous components. Sorry, there's tons of fragile components. Henceforth, I am going to get something to prop this up. This will have to suffice for now. I'm just going to put the screw tray to the side. These are all the capacitors it will take to recap the the radio. Okay. So let's go over our values. So first we got 220 and 30s to make a 50 unit. 
Here we got some point oh twos, some point four sevens, a point one, a point oh four seven, and a point two two. We are going to start by replacing this point oh four four seven. Okay, it's our first electrolytic condenser. 17 minutes! Okay. Fun fact, putting in the first capacitor took... I said condenser, I apologize. That took 17 minutes. Okay, now we're, now we're replacing this one. What's this one? Point oh one. Point... Oh, 0.01. Mislabeled it, didn't I? Again. First, we have the smaller one, which is a 0 0.02. Let's move that down there. There's a second black beauty. I'm gonna see if I can get this guy out. Nope. That sounds more like it. No more filter capacitor harness. We'll let that cool off a little bit before we pack it up. Okay. Now, this might be hot. Not too bad. Okay, that was the filter capacitor harness. Okay. Now, there's one common negative. So, we need to build the filter capacitor first. Here's my Sketcherama replacement. My working. Not cassette tape. Snip. There is our poor abuse capacitor. 250s at 150 volts DC. Here's the after. Let's see if this thing works. Uh, coming back on eastbound I-70, but not a bad... Afternoon. Fox 31 pinpoint weather calling for clear skies and cold temperatures tonight. A low of 22. Sunshine in the morning and increasing clouds through the day on Monday. Looking for a high. You, you notice that there's no hum when you turn the volume down. Let's look at the selectivity. Let's test the microphonics. Nope. No microphonics anymore. So, here we go. Yeah, I mean, we got out one waxer and two black beauties. There are two waxers in here, so. We we only mixed one we only excuse me missed one waxer. So that's good. Got a point oh four C this thing's big. So sticky. So we replaced 
this unit with two fifties. I had to kind of crush down the um, the new unit because I got rated four hundred, rated five hundred capacitors, and they barely fit. I mean, the chassis still doesn't lie quite flat. Volume knob actually kind of gets a little hard to turn on its very upper range, but the radio would be blasting loud at that point, so that's okay. So we replace this fifty fifty unit. We replace this point oh four seven. There's still one wax in there. And then we have these two black beauties. And yeah. Overall, there's you can hear there's no hum. I'm from Seattle. It's on the Kitsap Peninsula, which is a little peninsula. This has a tiny little loop in the back. It's not going to pick up much. But there you go. K part TC20. Also, what is my rating for this radio? I'd give this restoration a 7 out of 10. I would give it an 8 or even a 9, except for two reasons. One, I again messed up on the capacitor values. I should have gotten a point oh one instead of a point one. Boom! Um, also, also, I don't know what's the deal with the mic molds. And two, it was really a pain in the butt to get everything that fit back in the case. So, But besides that... There's a noticeable improvement, which could not really be said about the Firestone. So yeah, keep our TC20. Look out for the Stuart Warner. So I took this cover off. Look how thick the dust is. All of this is dust. This is like. There is so much dust. <laughs> 110 volt.